We are all a little depraved and debaucherous. Here is the king of podcasts. And welcome to the Pray the Debaucherous. This is King of Podcasts. This is take two, by the way, because I just realized for about 15 minutes I started the show and I didn't hit the record button. It's a podcaster's mistake and really a rookie mistake, but I even I, even King of Podcasts, I, yours truly can even do those things. So tonight on the program, I want to talk about the movie No Hard Feelings. Uh, starring Jennifer Lawrence, playing a 32-year-old Uber driver who, to try to get her hands on a used car that's being offered by a couple of helicopter parents, they're using it as bait so that the girl will help deflower and help groom and teach their 19-year-old son, who's introverted and stays in his room all day, Teach him what it's like to be a woman and teach how, teach him how to, it's like to be an adult and learn something about growing up. Now, I understand that there are going to be some people out there that are going to find the movie controversial and that what they talked about, about grooming, the fact that she, Jennifer Lawrence, in this movie, is 32 years old, which is a real age, and she's with a 19-year-old boy who's never been with a girl before and probably has never dated a girl before probably has never kissed a girl before has never had sex with a girl before. Okay. But 19 years old, when you think of the premise of the movie, wouldn't you want to go ahead and think that this young boy should know something about being with a girl and dating and maybe have done something with a girl, maybe not have sex yet. Okay. But in the movie, we find out this young man doesn't necessarily want to go and have sex just to have sex. He wants to get to know the girl. He wants to go ahead and, you know, find out reasons to like her so that he can move on to having sex with her. And it's only going along because she is trying to push the issue. Jennifer Lawrence's character, Maddie, right? And the boy's name is Percy. So in the movie, British Vogue actually put out a story about this and Claire Cohen wrote about it. And throughout this, she's talking about the fact that this is creating a form of toxic masculinity that would really encourage men and women that we need to be pressured into having sex. It's like how American pie was the movie in the nineties where, you know, four boys said, well, we need to get laid before prom, you know, that whole thing. Like that's not necessarily what we're talking about. That's a movie that was made as a sex comedy to go along with that. Porky's in the eighties was the same thing like that before. Right. We're not, talking about this it's a raunchy sex comedy it's trying to put a point across we get it i'll stick at the girl next door elijah cuthbert remember things like that these movies where boys understand and realize okay they don't need to be caught up in porn they don't need to be caught up in watching anime and all this stuff and finding all this sexual content when they could actually just be out doing something frivolous and carnal with the girls around them and if it's not with the girls around them, maybe somebody a little bit older that can teach them something. Okay. Now, part of the reason you'll say that's not right is because of the fact that, okay, if you're under 18, what are you doing with anybody that's older than you? Right. But in this case, we're talking about 19 year old. Now in high school, I think one of the things that has to happen is that we need to go and have kids go out, socialize and Learn how to go ahead and frolic with somebody that they like. Not as friends, but maybe as something more, something a little more significant. And make and learn how it is to become a boyfriend, how to become a girlfriend. Go through that. And you're not necessarily have to go through sex. But listen, kids are gonna be kids. They might have sex with each other, but you one thing you want to go and be able to make sure of is that they understand what sex is about, what how important it is, if they're gonna do it. And realize they need to protect themselves, you know, the risks or the complications that can happen as a result. So let the, all these kids now not learn what it is like to be with a man or woman or young, a young man or young woman to learn how it is to be with somebody else of the opposite sex or the same sex, whatever it is. They need to learn this. They need to realize that they can't just be. You want to be able to go ahead and learn more. So the themes of coming of age and sexual exploration. We don't have a lot of movies like this anymore. Not much. We need to put the realization out there that, okay, Jennifer Lawrence is a little bit older. 
than what's expected for a 19 year old boy, right? We like the idea of it. Listen, if you're a teenager, you know, Claire Cohen makes the point. You're not going to pass up Jennifer Lawrence. I mean, I wouldn't either. But Jennifer Lawrence's character, while she is not the best person in the role because of the fact that, you know, look at what she's doing to try to get a car. She is very much in a hookup culture, so she's not been afraid. She makes the point that she's hooked up with different guys for different things to get what she wants, which is atypical of the women out there now of getting things that they want. Sometimes they use sex. Sometimes they just use their body, their sexuality to get what they want. Same thing. Okay, for the girls that are out there, they're modern. They're going to use what they have to get what they want. It's the same thing. Just because it's sex or no sex doesn't make it any difference to me at all. And I think that's what's got to be a lesson, lesson to be learned here. So the 32-year-old Uber driver, Maddie, trying to make ends meet, needs a new car. This is what she does. You know, we already know that there's a lot of women out there that, if you look at sugar daddies, sugar babies, same thing. All these girls, men and women, or the women are at least definitely over 18. And they're going on the these sites, or they're going on Tinder, and they're willing to go and hook up with somebody a little bit older. Because the problem is that the mistakes have been made where the boys their age have not learned how to become gentlemen, have not learned how to become men, learn how to become good dates, learn how to become good lovers. The the boys need to learn something. But, of course, who's letting them do that now? In the movie itself, one of the actresses that plays the mom in the movie is Laura Bernatti, and she stars along with Matthew Broderick as the helicopter parents of 19 year old Percy. And in the movie, or when she talked about the movie, she made the point about this. And I like how she writes about this. So at the Tuesday premiere of the movie, she spoke with the Hollywood reporter and she says, it's a cautionary tale. This movie, no hard feelings. If you're a helicopter parent who puts your child in such a bubble, they do not know how to exist outside of that bubble. You're going to make the exact opposite and insane choice, which is what they're doing here. I feel like it is a very satirical look at what can happen if you do not give your children a longer leash to figure things out for themselves. Otherwise, you're going to end up curating their life forever. And that's the part right now, that there are too many parents out there that are creating the path for their kids to go along and being overly protective. When they got to learn, they can get their knees scratched. They can have a boo-boo. They can get, you know, they can have something happen to them and they learn from it. They can lose a game. They could try to get together with a guy or girl. If there's somebody in love and they learn heartbreak, they got to learn that your heart has to realize what it's like to be in love, what it's like to not be in love or when things go wrong, but you're more mature when you grow up. That's maturity. You need to go through these things. So when you're a teenager, teenager, You're learning these things so that you can become an adult. And by the time I'm 19 years old, that's not a bad idea to do that. All right. Well, the film grew out of an attempt from producer Mark Provozero's uh, attempt of wanting to make a movie about helicopter parenting. Uh, Stupnitsky, okay, the the guy named Gene Stupnitsky, he's the writer-director of the movie, he wanted to go ahead and adapt the book how to raise an adult thought it was a great idea, but didn't know how the story was. And then a fellow producer named Naomi, Naomi Odenkirk made him aware of the Craigslist ad that inspired the film. So it's based on the, one of, come of a true story. How about that? And then Provisero talks with Stupnitsky. They're with drink. They're having drinks. And at dinner, he says, I'm looking for something for someone like a Jennifer Lawrence. Halfway through the dinner, I remember the Craigslist ad that Naomi brought in six months earlier. And he didn't believe me, and he made me dig it up and show it to him on his phone, and he said, I'll write this for you on spec. From Zero writes about that this is not that far removed from actual parenting choices. You want to do everything you can for your kid, where's the line? So the ad was real. Stupnitsky did not try to look into who posted it or what happened, but thought he and the producers thought it was a great jumping-off point store for the story. So it didn't really matter what happened and if anyone answered it. It was just, who are these parents, these helicopter parents who are putting this ad out, and who's their son, what's going on there, and what answers, and who answers this? It's a great story. So then they go along and talk about 
that the movie, they took great pains to be careful about the ick factor because it could go, all could go that way. Taking a humanist approach and thinking that that's all you can ask for. And Natalie Morales, who's a cast member in the movie, who plays Lawrence's character's friend, they talk about the two characters, the age difference. Have you seen The Graduate? Well, Steve Lawrence's character is supposed to be playing an, adult, an older woman. There are so many movies where the male lead is much older than the female lead, and TV shows especially, and nobody bats an eye. So what's the difference? And they talk about Silver Linings Playbook and the co-star Bradley Cooper of 15 age, 15 year age difference between Lawrence and Cooper, right? Sony Pictures head Sanford Panich says it's just a really funny movie. And the CEO of Sony Pictures said, when you've done this as long as I have, you know when you've read it. You know when you've read it. It wasn't not only very, very funny, it was very kind-hearted and very sweet. I thought the combination of the wit and the heart was very special, and I'm a huge fan of Jennifer's. And Broderick, Matthew Broderick, said of the screenplay, quote, it was just really fun to read, as silly as it sounds, that's a lot. Often I read something, and it's a little hard to read it. This was just a pleasure. See, even the actors, actresses, and the, and the, and the people that made the movie, they get it. They understand this was just, it just was in fun. This is over the top, but there's a good story to be said about kids learning and boys becoming of age and learning to become men. That's the part of the thing we need to go and make more a point of. And so movie web also takes along on this and they make their point about the controversy of what this movie brings. We'll bring that up as no hard feelings positions positions itself as a sex comedy. The comedic elements are heavily overshadowed by essential elements of grooming and sexual harassment. Right. We see that. It kind of makes points. So you see Maddie forcing person in non-consensual situations, frequently using sexual innuendo and her body to try and seduce Percy, who very clearly is an interest. By the way, you know, when you look at the, yes, it's very far fetched, but, and, and you could try to go ahead and try to make some kind of seriousness about it. The fact that, you know, Maddie tries to go ahead and use her best friend's van, her best friend's uh, husband's van to go pick up Percy, right? To bring him back to his house and pick up his bike at the same time. And having the whole creep factor of like, look at this, the creepy van and bringing him in and all these different like knives and stuff are going on, all these different weapons going on inside. So like, yeah, the whole kind of like, that scene and then the kid uses mace <laughs> to go ahead and you know stop jennifer lawrence hilarious like you know it's something to be said about how they put this together the movie was says there's maddie's persistent and aggressive nature these are the attempts at humor with a bitter aftertaste instead of the awkward punchlines that were intended to be and then what's more disturbing is maddie has a full support of percy's parents in one of the opening scenes maddie asks do you date him or do you mean date him or date him? And then Matthew Broderick's character says, yes, date him hard. But they're only talking about the trailer. This is not even talking about the movie itself. So just make that point. The plot they said is outdated. Sounds like not another T movie. That sounds like, like American Pie. Right. So they say that the movie features harmful and outdated stereotypes of adolescent masculinity, Percy's innocence and lack of sexual desire being presented as weird and played for laughs. No. You might think that at the beginning, but the truth is you realize Percy at the end, he's the smarter guy, right? He got everything figured out and look what he did. He started learning everything. He was much smarter than people give him credit for because he realized things. Listen, he's a young, he's a young kid. You're smart enough to under, understand things. He's smart enough to go and do whatever he's going to do in college. I don't even know what his degree was going to be, but the thing is, is that it works. And I'll tell you what. I had a, about 25 people. They put it in a smaller screen for me to watch it at. So there might have been, what, room for 40, 50 people in that particular theater. And it might have been about half full. And for me, everybody was just laughing. They just took it as it was. It was a very diverse crowd in there, too. Different ages, different makeup of everybody. And people just had fun with it. First of all, I was just looking for a movie that was going to make me laugh. And it did. It finally happened to say that I finally found a movie that I was laughing at. Because there were some good jokes they put in there. And some of the stuff that was in there was awkward. It was very funny. And Jennifer Lawrence did a great job in this movie. And 
Jennifer Lawrence is an Oscar-winning actress, as, actress and decided they're going to take one of these projects for this year. That was pretty good. I thought it wasn't a bad thing they put in. I think it makes some good points. Now, Reddit also got into the talk about this. So we got to talk about that too and what people actually said about it. So I want to get with the audience out there that would have said about it. So somebody also saw the trailer. And this is posted in the Reddit for movies and comments about no hard feelings. Am I alone? Am I thinking this premise is wrong? So the person says that we see Percy, 19 year old guy, wants the woman pursuing him to stop doing so. She doesn't. She grinds on him when, of course, it's awkward, but he, because he doesn't want it and it's uncomfortable. It's just a little gross to me. And tone deaf if we're trying to get better as a society about consent overall. I've taught in my career on consent to teens, and the trailers for this just raised a lot of red flags for me. Not to mention the age gap. Okay. Well, there weren't a lot of articles that talked about it. British folk actually asked, why aren't more people, you know, raising a ruckus about the movie? But there wasn't. Something to be said about that. I understand there's a context for male characters who pursue much younger women in film, and that they've also been very fuzzy at best of consent on times. I don't feel this is a course correction. A course correction where the script is flipped with a sex swap is the best course of action rather than the death of the story trip altogether. So they go along and say, okay. And another person writes, if the joke is that she's a terrible person and the film is consistent in showing that she's gross and terrible, then how that would, how would that be the wrong message? What if it turns out that the film's message is kind of, this kind of behavior is reprehensible and should not be emulated? By the end of the movie, she learns from the experience and believes this is how gross and awful her earlier behavior was, which is what happens. Also, I think it's weird to assume we know the message of the film based solely on the minutes of a trailer, but it addresses some of the same exact things you're concerned about. It's impossible to say until the film comes out because the purpose of a trailer isn't to show the ultimate moral of a film, but to pitch the basic concept in the genre. So let's go ahead and move along to people that would have watched the movie by now, which would have been a week ago. So what we have so far is that I can start with the movies that it shows how, uh, how blase we are in the U S about teenage males being groomed or abused by older women. I know that this kid is technically above age, but it's not like Jennifer Lawrence is 25. She's 32. And the character Percy is reluctant to date her, which creates issues of consent. No one in the film is doing anything illegal. And in real life, if a 19 year old actually wants to date a 32 year old of his own volition, who doesn't pressure him into anything fine. But I think the film's premise is uncomfortable because it reinforces this idea that teenage boys are lucky if an older woman wants to have sex with them and cannot be victims. Whatever, Hollywood, do what you want, but I want people in our culture to make, take male victims of grooming and sexual assault as seriously as they do female victims. That's probably true, too, because it, it does happen. I mean, I know that there are always guys out there to talk about the teenagers that are always having sex with their students and, you know, the South Park episode about nice, right? And you you the little... You, you take the fist and you kind of go backwards and go, nice, right? That whole thing. Like it's not right, but there's a thing to be said about doing proper grooming. But it raises the issue and it makes you understand. Maybe we need to go ahead and look at this at a different perspective and realize, you know what? We should be paying attention to the boys that are out there and say to themselves, you know what? We need the young guys out there to realize that maybe it's better off that they go and learn the fact that they need to be learning what it's like to be men so that this situation doesn't happen. Remember, this is a very a very isolated situation. This is not something that's normally going to happen, okay? You're not going to get a Jennifer Lawrence answering an ad. like this. The, the chance of, of an older woman answering a Craigslist ad from helicopter parents like this, that's very little to none. But it makes for a funny movie. And that's what this movie was meant to be. So the other context of it about a woman... The idea that women should be able to go and help young boys or young men, teenagers, to learn how to be better men, okay? They shouldn't be pressured into it. They should figure it out on their own. As Lord Bernardi said, the kids should have a little bit of a leash to learn what it's like to be in life, okay? They should learn what it's like to go and be around boys and girls of their age. Learn what it's like. See what they like about themselves. Like, here's the other thing. If a guy or a girl is not sure of their gender, then they should go ahead and be able to go ahead and kind of experience with other people 
who they like as friends and who they like as something more. I mean, I think it would be good for men and women to have a little bit of experience on dating and relationships to a point. And it doesn't have to necessarily be sexual. You should wait, of course. But that's not going to work for every guy and girl out there. But there's something to be said about this that's not a bad thing to be written about it. Okay? I want to take from a story from the Good Men Project that talk about this. But this is outside of the whole concept. But I wanted to bring this point because maybe there's something to be said about this is not a bad idea. Story is called Teaching Boys to Become Men Starts Long Before They Reach 18. And so they make the point that many children are babied for far too many years. Adolescent rebellion goes on for many more years than is healthy. Ever wonder why there's scarring, piercing, tattooing, hairstyles, clothing, language, and many other perceived rebellions are so important to their teens. Now, I'm not saying there's anything wrong with it, but there's a reason why. Like how much of the things that you see some people do to express themselves is out of rebellion or out of abuse. Now, not all of them, but remember, some of it doesn't have to be abuse, but some of it has to be where when you're trying to control your kids and trying to make them go and do something that you think is good for them, but that's not what they want, okay? If they want to go a different path in life in terms of what their career is going to be, what they're going to do with themselves, who they want to be with, you need to give them some room to go and be able to make their own choices. Of course, you're going to guide them. And you give them the fact that you're parenting and very strict with your kids up to a certain age. When they get to a teenage years, then you give them a little bit of room to fail, a little bit of room to learn. Give them a little more room of a leash, especially when you get to the point where you're going to go to college age and the kids are going to go out to school. You want them to be able to have learned a few things about real life so that they're ready to go to the real world. Okay. That was something I didn't get to necessarily have too much myself because I kept myself away from it. But you create the situation so that there's a chance for these kids to learn about it. They can be around other people and they can learn who they really want to be. Rebellion is a way for teens to identify themselves with a group that approves of them. It's an outward shout announcing their independence. Some acting out in all teens is normal, right? It's a form of self-expression. That's okay too. But when we fail to recognize their coming of age, rebellion can manifest itself in extreme ways. And it's, I'm going to ready to take my place in the world. You agree, right? Parents often fail to recognize their teen's maturity by never clearly defining the line of the time that when it should cross over. Right. The other part is that parents themselves are going to have to learn that their kids are not going to stay kids forever. They're going to become adults. You're going to let them become adults. You can't stunt their adulthood. But parents are so distracted by the wall banging noise, often they forget to train teens on how to cross over skills required to arrive. Dads should play some part of some of the most important roles in validating their teens' arrival into adulthood, especially for boys. Coming for age of boys is a bit of a tougher scenario than with girls. Um, facial hair can begin as early as 11 years old, as late as 19 years old. So in the United States, manhood doesn't come in so early. American teenage boys often don't know when they've become men. Consequently, they continue in adolescent behaviors long after they should. The fact that they're playing video games and not doing something else with themselves. Like, okay, that's one thing to live watching anime, playing cartoon, you know, watching, you know, TV that might be animated or playing video games and not experiencing the real world. But the thing is that it's not the way the real world is. The social media and watching stuff online, that's not the real world. They got to go out and experience the real world. They got to have an idea what that's like. So the thing is, they, they make this point. Now, there's much more of a, <clears throat> a religious, a spiritual kind of kind, mindset to the story about having your kid learn what they are. But I think part of what they're saying on here is a good idea is that you want to be able to go ahead and make it where your kids have a chance to learn. And that's the part of helicopter parenting that's a problem. It's funny how they keep talking about that because it is something to be said where this movie really does give that. And I think it's a good thing to go and make this point. Helicopter parenting can have many risks for their children. Anxiety and depression, low self-esteem, lack of confidence, difficulty managing emotions and behavior, slower social and economic development, sense of entitlement, poor ability to assess risks, lack of emotional resilience and independence, reduced sense of autonomy and competence, and undermine relationship with their child. Now, the children might feel safe and secure, but that's not going to work for them because 
the parents are not going to always be there for them. And the kids are going to have to go out in the real world and learn what it's like to be around people and what real life is like. Like for me, I did good to go out. I got a little bit of street sense, and that was one of the things that really helped me out. But when it came to relationships and dating, no, not even close. I started so late and I was so awkward that it really did mess things up for me. And you don't want it to be a point where if your kid's going to be safe and secure at home and you don't want them to go out of the house, then what are they going to be watching online? What is going to be getting in their heads that they're going to learn about things, right? What social media is going to be out there? What porn is going to be out there? What are they going to go and find online that's going to make them think that what they see in animation, what they see in porn, what they see in other things, they're going to try to replicate it in real life. Do you understand that's what it comes from? Like all these sexual predators, all these kids that are, you know, kids that become rapists at a young age, as teens, as younger adults, because they're learning it from other, they're getting encouraged. Now, part of it might be, you know, the fact that in the helicopter parenting, that kids, if they're rebelling, which ones are being medicated? Because they feel like, well, the parents don't want to tolerate the rebellion. They're just going to find a way to sedate them and do that. And how they don't act right in school. They don't learn what it's like to be loved and what to be cared for. And, and I have a chance to go ahead and become, you know, live an everyday life as a child and get to learn and grow. I get to learn to grow as a teenager and then get to learn to grow becoming an adult. There's got to be some room for that. And I think this movie gives us a chance to talk about that. That's why I'm glad to talk about it tonight on the program, because I think it does give a good point that grooming guys, parents helping their kids get along. And then you know what? Women should take a role in helping Younger men become better men, but not for the use of them because, well, you know, look at all the other boys we want them to be. We want them to be like, okay, you tell us we're pretty. You make us, you simp for us. You give us money. You give us things. You take us out and you don't expect anything in return. No, 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 no. We need to go and teach boys to be men, be men that can have you know, a normal experience and not be caught up on this. Cause the other problem is, is that the social media does create this simp culture that we also think is not good because we don't know what ninth year old Percy was doing, you know, online in the background, besides playing video games that are violent. There are enough teenagers out there that are talking to other girls on OnlyFans, or they're talking to other girls out there and they're validating the girls on there saying they're pretty and this and that. Well, okay. You know what? Don't do it online. Who are the girls around you? You don't need to be doing it online and being manipulated and cajoled and, being persuaded to do things that you shouldn't be doing with girls online like that or meeting with them online, online online on top of that too, especially when you're young, the Tinder culture, the sim culture, all that, you know, boys not learning how to be sexually active or or, or learning what what it is to be sexually active when they get together with a girl for the first time. You know, when a girl's always talking about, well, you don't know what you're doing in the bedroom. Okay. Well then what are they supposed to do to do that? Like, how are they supposed to go and figure that out? Well, maybe they need to go ahead and get a chance to go out there and be noticed and get a chance to, you know, look up with a girl, get to know them better, realize what guys need to do to get to a girl that they are going to be with, that maybe they'll be interested in them, that maybe they'll get to go and do something more than just kiss and hold hands. Maybe there'll be a little more to it, right? Who knows? Maybe there's a chance for a guy go out with a girl, be a gentleman, and then someday he'll learn something about the facts of life. He'll learn about the birds and the bees. He'll learn about what it's like to have sex with a girl, know what the risks are, but at the same time, maybe he'll get to be a little depraved and debaucherous.